don't you go ahead and get your page up um, and uh, I'll give you a quick introduction. Uh, Melissa Armo is founder of the Stock Swoosh LLC. Uh, it is an educational firm that empowers traders with a complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. Melissa Armo graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She was employed uh, f by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008. A self-taught trader with over 10 years experience, Melissa's specialty is trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap. Uh, Melissa appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. Uh, okay, Melissa, um, the way this works is you have until five minutes before the hour, and then we will give away the next batch of prizes for the people who patiently listen to you. Uh, I see your uh, page is up, the stock swoosh, trade on the side of institutional money and gaps, and I'm going to mute myself and you have the floor. Thank you so much. Can everybody hear me? Just give yeah, me a we can. Great, wonderful. Today is an excellent day to be talking about not only institutional money, but also, of course, gaps. Why? What happened in the market today? The market gapped down today. The market gapped down today on bad economic data. We had a bad number. Again, it was an inflation number. But the reality is that this was much expected by me. The market rallied. People were buying the dip last week. I did not do that. Today we're going to focus on shorts, and actually I do focus on shorts, but I do go long occasionally. Sometimes I do go long. If there's something that I really want to go long right now, I will. We went long CVX last week. CVX is the symbol for Chevron. It's an oil stock, and that worked to the upside. So it's been quite an interesting year to trade. What I do is I do day trades, and I also do options, but I'm doing short-term options, which I'm doing weeklies. So I'm not doing long-term options or leaps. And as far as long-term investing, I think you're going to see a, the continued volatility between now and the end of the year. And this is something that I've been discussing on television because obviously if you're a consumer, the number today is not surprising. In fact, a lot of people think the number today is actually at the peak. I don't think that's the case. These numbers are retroactive. And if you're a consumer and you're going out purchasing things, you know that the price even of food products is actually more than 11%. So that was one of the numbers out today. And of course, these things are all in the past, but the numbers keep going up. So what happens when stocks fall, when the market falls, what happens? You get selling and you get shorts. So you can short today and you could short the market even right now. 1104, I got up this morning, saw it. I said 100% conviction the market is lower today and we were in it right out of the gate. We're in a market right now where again, you have to take the position correct in the right direction. If you don't, you're gonna lose. Now, while that's true in any type of market conditions, I think a lot of traders, active traders, day traders specifically, whether you're doing options or day trades or even swing traders, made money in 2021 just buying the dip. Why? The market was very bullish in 2021. You could have bought strong stocks, you could have bought weak stocks, you could have bought virtually anything in the market and made money in 2021. That market condition is over and it's been over for some time. But that's a very, a very interesting thing because again, over the long course of your life, if you really want to do this and if you want to trade, and remember trading isn't investing. Investing is something totally different. If you want to say, okay, fine, I think the market's higher five years from now, eight years from now, 10 years from now, that's not what we're talking about here today. So we're talking about getting in and getting a big move, and which is today, if you're short, if you're going to the downside today, getting a big move and capturing that move, booking the profits, I call it chunking it out, and then waiting for the next setup, okay? And again, the next setup is going to happen in what? It's going to happen in a gap. For those of you that don't know me, again, my name is Melissa Armo on the Stock Swoosh. You can feel free today to email me after the webinar at melissaatthestockswoosh.com if you have any questions or call me at 929-3200-GAP. And again, you can write questions in the chat room today and we'll see them as we go along. 
This is through actually the end of August, our results for the day trade room year to date. Again, I told you what we did today. We shorted the QQQs, we were in and out, although you still could be in it. Stats year to date through the end of August is 475,451. I'm not gonna go over all these trades today. The losers are in brackets and then the winners, every single trade that I do and every single trade that I call in the live room is based on a gap. Some trades are longs, but mostly we short, which is one of the reasons why today is a particular good day for someone like me and the people that are with me, because again, I'm, I'm going after it very, very aggressively, okay? So trading is something that you absolutely can make a half a million dollars a year or more. We're only in September now. We got three and a half more months left in the year, plenty of time left in the year to make money. And if you're losing this year, you still have time to turn your year around. Trading is a real job if you take it seriously. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't. They want to watch, you know, YouTube videos or come to webinars like today. And why this week is very educational, it's you're not going to learn how to trade even listening to me for one hour or any of the speakers today. You have to commit yourself to taking a class, to really seriously doing it. And I think a lot of people just don't understand how seriously you have to take it. Does it mean it has to be agonizing? No. Learning can be fun, okay, but there is a level of commitment. The commitment is a time commitment. The commitment is a financial commitment. And really it's a commitment to yourself that you decide that this is something that you wanna do. Whether you wanna do it full-time, part-time, whether you wanna do it for a living as a real job, either way, it's something that if you wanna do it and if you wanna do well, you can do well, but you have to take it seriously. And really one of the benefits of trading, day trading, is that it's part-time hours with full-time pay. We were out of the market trade this morning super duper early. By 10 a.m. we were done. Now again, while you still could be in the market short today, we were done quick, okay? The first 30 minutes of the day is extremely important in the market at any stock that you trade. Today was another day where that really shone through. But in reference to picking what you wanna do, what stock you wanna do, what direction you wanna do it, I really think it's very important if you want to be successful as a trader to have an edge. In fact, I think you must have an edge. A lot of traders went long the dip last week. They did, but I did not. Why? Because I knew today was going to happen, but I didn't know when, and I didn't do it until you see it. But the fact is, you could be long overnight, and any second today could have happened. Today could have happened Monday, could have happened Friday, could have happened last Thursday. And actually, it's interesting because last Thursday we rallied. And that was crazy to me. We really should have fallen last Thursday, but it took three days to catch up to it. If you're going with the crowds, you're going to lose. Why? Most people lose in the market. Why? Again, going back to the same thing I just said, people don't take it seriously. They don't take it seriously. And as the losses add up, as they're trading and taking pot shots at things, then they feel depressed, downtrodden, and then start to do piggy targets and take pot shots at stuff in desperation to make money back from the losses. If you just want to start and have a fresh, clean, straight, uh, clean slate, you can learn how to trade. But I think, again, going back to what I was saying, a lot of people just don't take it seriously enough. But today we're going to talk about some very serious things. What? Institutional money and also gaps. But really today, and one of the good reasons it's a good day this webinar is going on is to, we're seeing momentum in the market today. And trading momentum actually gives you an edge. Why? Because a regular person could trade with less than $100,000, for example, and make a lot of money on one particular day. Otherwise, you'd need a hundred grand, $500,000 if you had to take small positions in something. You want to be able to take 100 shares, 1,000 shares, and make $1,000. If you have to take 10,000 shares of something, or 100 contracts, for example, in an option, say, in order to make 10 grand or eight grand or $7,000, you're gonna need a lot of money to do that. So if you get a big move in something, something that moves a dollar, $2, $3, four, again, like the market today, you don't have to take this enormous size or position size cash wise in order to make a lot of money. So there's a benefit, again, to doing equity trading because you're trading on margin. There's a benefit to trading options because you can hold them overnight and you don't need a margin account to do options. But either way, no matter what type of trading you do, momentum is key, okay? Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. And by fast, I mean a couple of minutes or a couple of days if you're in an option. 
Learn how to take a position in a stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. These enormous moves happen in one direction and they happen fast. Again, today is a great example. Momentum trading is very profitable and that is how you can make big money in the market without having a huge account, okay? Because most people do not have a huge account. And while some people have retail accounts where the minimum is 25,000 to do equity trading, you really need more than 25,000 because if you have one loss and you're hit under the 25,000, you have to send money. So you really need 30 or 40 or 50, okay? Unless you're at a prompt place. So for individual traders, most people really need to get the quick, fast moves. And you have to think like a professional. Now, professional traders, big traders that work for hedge funds and banks, obviously, they have a lot of money. They're taking big positions, all right? You have to think and look at what they're doing in order to ride the coattails of what they're doing in order to get the big moves or the momentum for profit. And really, again, you must have a reason to take the trades and risk money, all right? Now, the fundamentals matched up with the gap down in the market today. That's not the reason that I decided to short the market today. I rated the gap and using my system, the gap rated that it would follow through to the downside and fall, and that's what's happening. But there are times when the data shows a negative and the market rallies. Like I said, that happened last week. Fundamentals are good if they match up with the technicals, if that helps you get conviction. If they don't, it's dangerous though to look at fundamentals and say, okay, well the fundamentals are good, so therefore I'm gonna do this, X, Y, Z, if the price action of the technicals don't match up for it. And I think that was part of the problem in the, I call it a fake rally. It was a fake rally last week, because I, I knew it wasn't gonna hold, but I didn't know when it would drop again. It happened today. But anyways, with the fundamentals look a certain way, somebody can come out and say, do ba do ba do this report is this. Again, all of these things are, I don't wanna say fudged, but if you're a consumer and you're going out right now and you're shopping and you do grocery shopping, you know that food prices are not 11% higher. They are way more than 11% higher, okay? Because they take an accumulation and an average of many, many products. In reality, a lot of the products and things of the food consumption that we eat are actually double. 50%, 100% more. And even though everyone's talking about oil prices, yeah, oil prices have come down since June. They haven't come down since last September, since last June, okay? So again, fundamentals take into account people's opinions way too much. Price action, real-time line price action that you're seeing is what counts. And that's what you wanna look at and that's where you wanna put your money at, or, or your money to work for you, I should say. So what I'm looking at is the footprints of institutional money. What do I mean? It's buying and selling or shorting, okay? Because hedge funds can short, big traders can short, and they can buy puts, which is a short in an option. So institutional money is what? It's big money. Big money that comes in, and it comes in big and fast and quick and huge. And again, big is good because that means momentum because you could take a smaller miniature or medium-sized position as an active trader and make a lot of money if you get a big move, okay? Again, you don't have to have 10,000 shares of something, for example. It's always about looking at, oh, look at this. I clipped this. I clipped this last night. This is before the gap down today. Look at this. This is the spy. I took a picture of this last night and stuck it in here. It's all about who is in charge. Who is in charge? The bulls, the bears. This is a chart, a daily chart of the SPY going back until April. You look at it and you want to go with who is in charge, who is in control. If the bulls are in control, you want to be long. If the bears are in control, you want to be short. And you may say, well, that sounds easy enough to say, but sometimes it's tricky. This really isn't tricky. It's not tricky. If you know what to do, if you don't know what to do, then it is tricky. And that's where people get tripped up. And then they get very upset and they say, oh, the market's rigged and this thing, that thing, the other thing. No, it's not. If you're losing money, you're looking at the wrong thing, or the strategy that you're using to try to make money doesn't work, okay? So you have to make money on a regular basis if you want to trade for a career. And quite frankly, I think if you're even doing this part-time, you still have to know what to do because you're still putting your own hard-earned hard, hard money on in a position. And it could be $500, it could be $1,000. Either way, it's money that you don't want to lose. You want to win, okay? You need more winners than losers. You gotta have more winners than losers. And preferably, you have some big winners, okay? So I use a method that looks at institutional money. I'm capturing these big moves on a small time frame on a chart, and I'm looking at it on the daily, where we're in and we're out. 
I'm looking at institutional money. It is in charge. It is in charge all the time. Even if you think it's not, it is. Today is a great example of this. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. I didn't have any interest in going along this market in the last week. None. I'm not surprised about what happened today. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. It doesn't mean that something can't go against a certain, a, a certain direction for a certain period of time, but it doesn't mean it's in charge, okay? Because if you are in the wrong direction in something, you're going to lose. If you're in the right direction, you're going to win. And you've got to have more winners than losers, okay? And again, any questions, I'm seeing the, the chat box here on the side. But as I was talking about early, earlier, technical analysis is how I'm making my decisions. It's based on chart reading. It's the price action in charts. Comprehending how to read, define, and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. You've got to elevate yourself and your trading and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. And the reality is if you're watching TV and you're listening to what people are saying, even today, even this morning, or last week particularly, you know, if you're just listening to people, you might think X, Y, Z. And then you turn out and you say it's no, it's A, B, C. Because again, everyone has a bias. People that are even talking, other people that I'm on TV with, they have biases. They're in positions, okay? Their bias is the position that they're in, whether it's long or short, all right? You need to learn what's happening in the chart because that, you know, if the market's trading at, you know, 295 and change or whatever, I'm just talking about the QQQs, everybody can pull it up and we can see in live time that the market's at 295. There's no questioning that, okay? There's no difference of opinion. It's at 295 or whatever the price happens to be. So I, I think it's a lot of it is about opinions and we're in a very highly opinionated world right now. So the fact is that social media, all of these things, and it can affect people's ability to be able to make decisions that they should just make based on the right information. But if you use the right information, if you know what to look for, the market does have the ability to pay you. And so there's no reason to get depressed or down if you have a losing day or losing week, or if you've been losing this year, you can turn it around. But you've got to learn what to do, okay? So you can be successful and you can win big if you're on the side of power. How do I do that? I do that in gaps. So let's talk about, again, what happened here today. What is a gap? A stock gap, so the opening price today is a different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Last night on Monday night, the market closed at 4 o'clock Eastern time at blah, blah, blah price, and so did everything else, and it closed green on the day. Then today, we opened down, down, meaning the price of today was lower than the price of yesterday. Again, we rallied yesterday, closed strong, 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 had a four-day rally. Then today, we got up in the morning, and the market was down. Now, we could have filled the gap today. We could have rallied today. In fact, the market for a little bit today tried to rally, tried to hold on, tried to do it, couldn't do it. Tried to hold on support, failed, and then fell, okay? So there are gap ups, there are gap downs. The market could have gapped up today on the data. It didn't. The market gapped up from Friday to Monday, okay? So if you went long the market, for example, Friday, I did not do this, you were up Monday morning when you got up because the market closed at one price on Friday and was at a higher price on Monday morning, all right? But I think a lot of people that did that, and there were people that did that, thought the market would continue and was higher into this week. We have a rate increase next week. Is that gonna mean continued volatility in the market? Sure, is it gonna mean we're gonna to continue to fall? Not necessarily, not necessarily at all. Whatever you think you are going to expect to happen fundamentally is probably not gonna be what you think. And even if it is a negative reaction, meaning a negative report, I should say, it doesn't mean we're gonna have a negative reaction and vice versa. So you must look at the price. Let's look at here this again. I put this in this morning before before we even open, here was the cues. Okay, somebody tell me where the market's at right now. I can't see it because I'm talking. Where, where's the market at right now? We may as well just look at this right here because this is the cues. Somebody tell me where the market is a second. Talking about the QQQs. Where are we trading right now? 
Is anybody there? Anybody have their charts up? Any real traders here that are trading right now? 297.65, there we go. So here's where we are, you see this? Snug as a bug. Where did we open this morning? Up here. So if we're here right now and we open here, we're falling today. Where were we last night or this morning even before, before the re this like literally happened at 8.30 people. Okay, we gapped down at 8.30. This wasn't at 6 a.m. So here's where we were last night, 310.74 and change, and then boom, snug as a bug. This is where we open, and then somebody just said we're here. Okay, that's a gap. Now let's go back to last week. I was talking about Friday. So actually, no, let's go back to Thursday. Thursday we closed here, then we gapped up then we rallied we got bought ran straight up like a rocket this was friday then we closed then we gapped up monday then we rallied so again theoretically if you had gone long you could have made money if you went in and got in and got out i did not do that because i was anticipating a downward move so i waited patiently sometimes you just wait you wait for the setup you stalk it but anyways technically you could have gone long friday and you could have got out by the end of the day friday and you would have been fine this is a daily chart. Every decision I make is on the daily. The gap is where? The gap's on the daily, okay? Let's go back. Let's take it back. Take it back, 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 back. What happened here? This was another big sell-off day. I remember that day was a Friday. I was going to look for apartments that day. I left the house, came back, and we closed at the lows. I was like, yippee skippy. This was a day the market, I don't even remember why we fell that day. It doesn't even matter. We closed here on the Thursday, open here, where we're down a little bit, fell off a cliff. That was Friday, August 26th. That was before Labor Day. Okay. Here is the spy. This was last night. Again, what is a gap? There's a lot of gaps in here. Here's the one from Thursday to Friday, Friday to Monday, and then this morning we opened somewhere down in here. And again, I don't know where the spy is right now. If anyone wants to tell me that, I know we're falling. I don't even have to look at it to know that we're falling because the gap today was going to follow through to the downside. So again, I'm not predicting where we're going to gap. I'm waiting for the gap, seeing it in the pre-market, and then I rate it. And I say, okay, this gap is going to move up or this gap is going to move down. And so I saw the gap today, but it didn't happen until after 8.30. Now, this was a gap that we did on that day I just was talking to you about, August 26th. This was an options trade. I sent out the options trade at 10.05 in the morning. The 4.15 spy puts that, that expired on Labor Day or the weekend before Labor Day, uh, September 2nd. But it fell that day. It was a beautiful trade. It fell that day. Cost was $3. That's very reasonable for the market. 25 contracts, so a $7,500 risk, sold at $18.50, was a 517% return on investment profit. 38750 What if you risk $1,200? You could have made $6,200. let us take a look at the chart. It was the 415 puts that I called here. Somewhere in here was like right above. I called it right above. I saw that we would do this. And we did this. Boom, boom, boom. So again, just like today, I called puts today in the morning, in the pre-market, way before the open. You can't do the trades until the open, but I called them very early this morning. This here, again, was this particular debt. It was a huge trade. Why? Momentum, 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 momentum. How do you get trains like this? Over 500% return on investment. Get a good entry. Predict it's going to go, whether up or down. This was a put, though. This was a put, though. This morning was a put. Again, spotting the power of money that's going to come in before it comes in is where that's all where it's that's the technique okay the technique is to see it to make the prediction and then know it like i'm, I'm going to tell you right now it's 11 24 in the morning today is not four o'clock yet four o'clock is four and a half hours from now i'm telling you right now the market will close right today i don't know where the bar could be small it could be medium it could be big it could be john mungo we could have a big tail by the end of the day we could try to bounce by the end of the day but either way the market will have a red bar today of some sort in size I can tell you that right now, I'm making the prediction four and a half hours from now. You can email me after four. I'll, I'll be right. So, you know, seeing where something's gonna go, seeing the power of money 
is how you can make money as one individual person. Whether you do three contracts or 33 contracts, it's the point. There is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock that's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. And if you know how to trade with them, you can make money, even though you don't have as much money as they do. But they're moving stocks. What happened this morning? Again, you had a big move to the downside. Yes, you had a move up last week, but in my opinion, in my opinion, Melissa Armo, that rally was not made with institutional buying. Therefore, I did not go long any of those gaps. Therefore, I did not go long at all. We went long CVX, it worked, that was it. But the, and the only reason I did that was because I knew that would work no matter what the market did, okay? But the fact is you can have green bars and they may not be made with institutional money. You can have red bars and they may not be made with institutional money. Do you follow me? And this is where people get tripped up. This is where people get tripped up and then they get confused and they get frustrated and everything else like that. And again, people are looking at fundamentals too. And some people are saying we're getting out. Kathy Wood was on uh, Fox Business. It was actually last Thursday. She was on Mornings with Maria. And she was saying how she thinks that we're, we're not in a recession. We'll get down to inflation levels of 3% in the next three to six months. Three to six months. I totally disagree with what she said. Totally disagree with what she said with that. I, I did agree with one thing that she said. She said that uh, unemployment is going to go higher, much, much higher. That point, I agree with her on, okay? But again, you see, you could have even funds that are in disagreement. You could have a small fund and a big fund and a medium-sized fund, people that are running these funds. Someone like her who's very successful, she's running big money, who could have very, very, very different opinions, okay? Um, we're only buying and selling. So we buy the put and sell it. It's momentum in the options. I'm not doing fancy dancy stuff. Or I'm buying a call and I'm selling it. That's it. So gaps have, it's momentum. We're trading the options based on momentum too. Very easy. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps. Some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money, AKA today in the market. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power money will flow to pay you. And this is very, very important. It's important not just for your active day trades accounts, but let me tell you this, this is very important for your retirement accounts, okay? A lot of people got pummeled at the beginning of the year. We started off the year at brand new all-time highs in the spy, not in the queues, but in the spy, fell off a cliff ever since. We will not make a brand new all-time high in the market before the end of the year. Uh, you can write that down in blood too. We won't, okay? We may have a rally, a Christmas rally or something in December. We may have another rally this year. We may be in a range after today for the next six weeks until our earnings season. I don't know. I'm not even worried about that. But the fact is that we're not gonna make a new high in the market this year at all. And a lot of people think that we will or thought that we would before today, actually. So we don't have time to do it. And there's no reason that we're gonna do it, okay? So again, next week, interest rates are gonna go up, probably 75 basis points. The market's gonna react not to that, because everybody knows it's gonna be 75 basis points. The market's gonna react to what uh, the Fed chair says, whether or not he gives an indication if he's gonna lower rates in the, in the following months or if he's gonna raise them. Again, Kathy Wood thinks that the Fed's gonna lower rates into the end of the year, into 2023. I, I just don't see how that's possible, okay? And until the unemployment numbers really reflect moving higher, I'm talking about over 4%, over 5% or 6%, which she even brought up, the Fed isn't gonna drop rates. That could be 12 months off. Anyways, here was another gap. This was a day trade we did. This closed here, gap down. This was a 24. So we closed up here. This is JWM, it's Nordstrom. I love Nordstrom. They opened up a new store a couple of years ago, luckily before COVID in New York. 22 and change, open in the morning here, around 19 and something. We shorted this as a day trade, quick in and out. This is not an option. This is a day trade. You need uh, margin to do this. 1935 was the entry, 3,000 shares, risk 2850. Exited 1868, that's in and out, boom. That's good. 
and a, and a nineteen dollar stock, twenty dollar stock, eighteen dollar chain. This is good. That's a move. Thirty cents, forty cents, fifty cents, sixty cents out. It did continue down, 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 and you could have done a couple of other trades in there actually. Um, but this was a quick one. We were in and out. Here is the one minute. So I rank the gap based on the daily chart. I'm taking the trades on the one minute. Here's the one minute. This was four o'clock the day before. You can see where this was. Gap down, rallying. We got in it, got the drop. Boom, out, done. Done in the first half an hour of the day, done. Okay, that was 824, that was earnings, that was JWN. I didn't look at this today. I'm sure this is dropping today with everything else. But anyways, everything I do is based on gaps. It's a strategy. A lot of people just wanna buy every dip. That's not a strategy. You could say that it is, but it's really not. Because you could say, well, I always buy support. Okay, well, there's about a 1 billion supports. <laughs> I mean, how do you know what support's gonna hold? You need an infrastructure for every entry, and it's, and, and it's a strategy. So for me, it's gaps. A strategy is a core reason behind why you're even watching the stock in the first place, or the market, or even contemplating an entry or trading it. An entry in a stock should not be taken unless to trade as a foundation supporting it. The foundation for me is gaps. Without that foundation, for the reason you're taking the trade, you're going to lose more than you win, and that is why day traders struggle. They struggle because they lack a foundation. They may say that this is the foundation, that they buy support. There's too many support areas. We were on support today. Guess what? It didn't hold. You know that right now. We're two hours into the open. So you can't buy support and say that's a, that's a strategy. It does not consistently work, okay? So gaps are a strategy and a foundation for you to take trades in the market. When you choose to take a trade, there has to be a support system behind why you're taking it in the first place. Gaps are the support system, a reason why you would enter a position, whether long or short. Okay, we just happen to be talking about shorts because I like to short, I love to short. The reason you're choosing to enter a stock or the foundation for your entry should be because the stock is a quality gap. This is something that I look at in the pre-market. Okay, so again, what is a gap? The stock gaps on the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. It happens quick, it happens overnight. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. We did NVIDIA, and NVIDIA is falling today. Again, everything's falling today with the market. When the market falls, most things fall. When the market rallies, most things rally, okay? So if you don't know how to read the market, and by market, I mean the QQQs of the spot. Even though I look at the diamonds, which is ETF for the Dow, there's only 30 stocks in the Dow, so I don't look at that every day. I look at the SPY, I look at the Qs. Again, most things go with the market. If you don't know how to read the market direction in the morning or overall, day by day or week by week, you're gonna get tripped up in trades too because most things go with the market. Anyways, this was back in here. This closed here, gap down. This was the 31st. Again, fell, dropped, boom. So we did the 145s, I sent it at 4, 7.46 in the morning. You cannot take this trade until it opens. So I caught an expiration date of September 9th. Cost was $6, 12 contracts, risk was 7,200, sold at 13, profit 8,400. It was 117% return on investment. What if you wanna do a smaller size? Again, take two, take one, risk $600. Either way, you turned your money over pretty quick. Right, again, momentum. I'm going to go back. Again, you take it, get in, get the drop, get out. Boom. Down here's the volume. If you wanted to hold it, that was fine too. It held under the 145 for the strike. But again, the whole idea of trading is not to hold something forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. This is a long-term investing. And people do get confused with that because they're thinking long-term. Long-term, do I think the market recovers? Of course. Do I think it recovers before the end of the year? No. Again, it doesn't mean we don't have rallies between now and December 31st, okay? But we're not going back up to the high. So if you know that, then what are you gonna do? You better be quick in and out of your long positions, people. Or you better know what you're going long, okay? You better be in love with whatever you're going long in or be prepared to take the hit, like for example in today. So anyways, the system I use to find the right gap each day is a system I created. This is a class I teach once a month. It's called the Golden Gap 26 point rating system. I'm doing the class for September this weekend. Hard to believe it's this weekend. September 17th and 18th, we're halfway through. 
before September. This weekend, before you know it, we're going to be changing the clocks. It's already getting darker here earlier in Manhattan this week. It's hard to believe. It's soon going to be fall. It's soon going to be cold. Then it's going to be winter. And then it's going to be the holidays. The year is going very fast. But I do teach this class once a month. Uh, this was another one we did. This was that amazing day on the Friday. This closed here, gap down, fell. This was Marvell. Entry was 5335. This was a day trade. 1500 shares. Risk was 3225. Add 5310. Total shares I plopped on and did an ad here because I really liked the trade a lot. Cost average myself in a little bit underneath the original position price, but I knew it was moving big. And again, exit was 5052. So again, three dollars, two and a half bucks. You want to get a move, momentum really good profit in this again it's a big fat red bar so again this was a short it was a short so in the live trading room like today i'm calling the entry take it here put the stuff get out here in and out okay and again this is marvell 826 here's this is the that was the daily let's look at the one minute stock close here gap down fell again look boom this is the money this is what you want to do. This is the selling. Again, if you're going long here, you're going to lose. You were stopped out. It dropped. Okay. So again, that was another move of what? Institutional money sold Marvell. Same thing back in here with this guy here in NVIDIA. This actually started all the way up in here. Look. So that's selling, people. That's institutional selling. You see how easy it is to make money if you're in the right direction. So once you know how to do it, it's just not hard. Think about it. It's the fact that if you don't know how to do it, it is hard. But that's true for anything, all right? It's like if someone said, okay, you're going to be in the U.S. Open next year. You're like, oh, my God, I've never played tennis in my life. What's the chances you're going to win? Slim to none. I mean, you know, you have to learn how to do stuff to, do, to excel at it, to do well. So then we did the spy on the first as well. Entry was 392.35. This was a day trade. We did another ad in this too, right really underneath the original price position. Pummeled it on, got the move, again got the drop. $2 out. That's a momentum move, even in something at this price point. You could have bought a put in this if you didn't want to take this trade on margin. Profit, 5850 So again, 9-1 is here. What happened here? It had a gap down, and it rated good to fall, and it worked. Stock close here, gap down, dropped, boom. You're in, you're out, boom. This was this other day back in here, too. Remember that day? That was a big day there. So we started off, I mean, again, today is the 13th. We're two weeks into the month. We started off September. Guess what? To the downside. So this was 9-1. Again, this is a one minute. Stock close here, gap down, dropped. Again, this is a short. You take it, you're in, get the drop, out. We're not, these are shorts. We're not buying. We're shorting. Tim's asking, are we buying? No, we're shorting. We're shorting, shorting, shorting. But we're taking a position on margin, if that's what you mean. Is that what you mean? Or did you mean actually buying? There's no buying here in these. We're shorting. Okay? Does that make sense? But the most important thing, if you take nothing away from anything I've said today, which I hope you took a lot away from what I said today, is that you need a daily focus. One pick a day is all you need. If you want to make money in the market, one thing is all you need to do a day. That's it. That's all you need to do. And you do it right. And you do it well. Professional traders have specialized strategy systems and reasons for taking trades. You have to focus on one thing, one strategy, one pick to be effective and efficient. So my method tells me one pick to do each day. Although there are days like today when I know the market's going to drop and we did several options today. Why? Because I saw that we'd get the help of the market. It's rare that the market will power trend up or down in any one particular direction on the day. Today is a day the market will power trend down today. Like I said, we will close red. But when you find institutional money, you will also find momentum and you need that for big profits. 
Well, we we short where we're doing there's two things. We're buying puts and selling puts. That's a short. Shorting on margin for this for this here, the spy, this trade is an equity trade. But I prefer to short overall for the whole since I started trading, you know, 14 years ago because I believe that it gives me an edge because a lot of traders prefer to go long and they don't know how to short right. Okay, so I know how to short. I'm aggressive in doing it. I can see it very early in the pre-market. Short big moves happen to the downside fast and quick like today. And I feel that that gives me an edge. Okay, so I prefer to short, but I will go long. We're not never going long. Okay, but I prefer to short because I think it gives me an edge. Hope that answers your question. Anyways, every day I'm looking for a stock to trade that's gapping that has a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, aka the market today. Big moves in the day, again, market today. Early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10, had it today, and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward. So if you'd like to learn my method, it is a rating system. That is what I teach in the class once a month. Again, the class is this weekend, September 17th and 18th. It will teach you how to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decisions on the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind are looking at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And if you can trade with that, it's going to help you. It's going to help you make money and lose less. Okay, nothing is 100%. I do have trades that lose, but the whole idea is that we want to win more than we lose and we want to have some big winners. Okay, I'm losing the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick, and that allows for accuracy in the direction, and then the one minute allows for the good risk reward trades with accuracy. But it's really, the meat and potatoes of what I do is a 26 point checklist. This is what you'd pay me for to come and learn my time and the information, because it's like finding gold at the market, and that is why I termed it the Golden Gap Course. It is a plan of action, it is a checklist, and all professionals, all professionals have checklists to do. Again, if you were someone that you were gonna fly an airplane, okay, you go through a checklist if you're a pilot. You don't just take off, all right? Traders constantly do 50-50 crap shoots taking pot shots for stuff. I guarantee there were day traders today that went long and shorted the market and done both. And they will before the end of the day, okay? So you can't be like that. You don't have conviction in something to the upside and the downside. That's impossible, all right? You have to focus on institutional money. And that is really what is so powerful about doing gaps. Are all gaps made with institutional money? No, no. You can't short every gap down. You can't buy every gap up. You have to find the good ones, okay? Gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading the side of power and money. So there's bullish institutional money like what? Alta, we went long this. We did go long this. We did calls in this, it worked. This got bought. This is large institutional money buying it. It's a very strong chart, okay? That had earnings a couple weeks ago. What's another one? CVS, another very bullish chart. I'm sure this is falling today, but we did go long this too and it worked. This is a bullish chart where the institutions are buying this. You also have bearish institutional money, again, where you have shorts and you have selling. Dell was a short. Look at that. We did that. That worked dropped, fell off the planet, okay? Again, how did it do it? In a gap, stock close here, gap down, dropped, fell off the planet, okay? That is selling that's happening in this. And then Marvell, which we already talked about, that had this big selling here, and we had that nice trade in the Marvell. So you're looking for the bulls, and you're looking for the bears, and you want to get on the right side of it. Um, I had the, the, the level two and the level three, but I'm not making trading decisions based on that. I'm making trading decisions based on the gap based on the gap. So you gotta have a chart and you gotta have live data, okay? I'm not making trading decisions based on, on those other things. I have them, but I don't make the decisions based on that, if that helps. Anyways, getting into the end of this here, I have a few more minutes. You, you can trade and make money. And, and I think in right now, in this economic times where people are feeling a lot of uncertainty, they're in fear. People are in fear about the future. In fact, if you rewind back to 2020, people have been in fear now for going on two and a half years. People were in fear about getting COVID and rightfully so, I understand that. And now people are in fear about their financial future. You gotta get out of the fear. 
You can't control about everything that happens in the world, but you can control your own life. And you certainly can control what you do with your own cash and your own money. And you can control what you do for a living. A lot of people, you know, are in these uncertain times and they're feeling fear and it's just going to feed the fear. So time is very precious. You get up every morning and if you are motivated and you are determined, determined to be successful as a trader, you can do it. It could be easy for you. It could be hard because you might have had some mental things that you have to overcome if you've been trying to trade for years and you've been losing. You're not helping yourself by being in fear and you're not helping yourself by staying in the fear either. Work for yourself. Think positive for yourself. Think positive about the future, okay? The whole world can go to hell and you can still have a, have a good life. It's all about your frame of reference. It's different for every single person. And trust me when I say I live in Manhattan, I see all kinds of different things going on every single. I see the poorest people in the world, homeless people in the street, and the richest people on the planet. So the fact is that it's all about your frame of reference, but you got to believe in yourself. And whining and complaining isn't going to get you anywhere. You can whine and complain that you took a class, you didn't learn how to trade, and you wasted money. You can whine and complain that you lost in a trade, and you went along the market, and it failed. You can whine and complain all you want. That's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get you to move forward. Pull up your bootstraps and be determined to do it, and you can learn how to do it, and I'm teaching people how to do it. So don't waste time trading without getting anywhere. It just makes no sense. This is a testimonial from Daryl. Let me see if there's any questions. Any other questions here before we are done? Some testimonials. And again, if you'd like a trial for the trading room for the rest of the week, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. I look at a 26-point checklist. I do this in the morning. This is what you learned in the class from me. It also teaches the entries. You can empower yourself and learn how to trade. It is a complete system which I teach in this course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. It's this weekend, September 17th and 18th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class is online. It's $69.99 and well worth every penny. If you want to sign up, you cannot sign up through the website. You must email me to register. My birthday is this week, so I'm doing a birthday special through this week. If you're interested in signing up, you can sign up by Friday and receive the trading from the newsletter free until the end of the year. So you get all my trades, pretty much the options and the day trades at the end of this year free if you sign up for the class this weekend. Any questions from anyone before I go here? I think we're done a little bit early. Great presentation. Thank you. Um, and again, you know, I don't have time today because I have something I have to go to this afternoon, so I don't have time to watch TV. I'm probably going to be on Fox the end of the week. I, I, I could be Wednesday, Thursday, but I'm probably going to be on Fox News on Neil Cavuto's show on Friday to discuss markets if you want to tune in, tune in at four. The reality is that a lot of people had been pumping up the market in the last week, or really even since June 16th, that that was going to be the lows for the market for the year. I'm not predicting that that's not. I'm not saying that that is either way. I don't know. Maybe June 16th is a low for the market for the year. Maybe we break it. I don't know. Either way, I don't care, okay? We're chunking it out. We're active traders. We're in. We make the money. We get out. We're in to make the money. We get out. This isn't about long-term investing where we're going to buy the market here and hold it until 2030. That's not what we do. And if you're an active trader, you shouldn't be doing that either, okay? Who cares if the market's at the low of the year on June 16th? Who cares if it breaks it? If you're in today, short, in stuff, you know, you're, you're up, okay? If you're trying to go long this market today, you're losing, okay? If for an individual person right now, this second, that's all that matters. And it's a similar thing with the economy. You cannot predict every single thing that's going to happen in the future. Whether or not Kathy Wood is right that we're going to be down to levels of inflation down to 2% in the next six months or whether she's wrong has neither no bearing on any position that you should take in a train. And while I get that people love fundamentals and they love to look at the numbers and they love to look at this stuff, if you focus on price action and you focus on the momentum and doing what you should be doing on the particular day to make money, you're going to be okay and you're going to be fine, but you got to know what to look for. Uh, thank you for the happy birthdays. Do you need a special software to determine the type of buyer? No. You can trade at any broker, anywhere, any prop firm, or any retail firm. You need a live charts, a live level two. You got a pre-market data. That's it. Any questions or if you want to trial to the room for the rest of the week, email me at melissathestockswish.com. Thank you so much.